Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Today's video we are in the shop and we are working on our truck bed camper build, so stick around. Uh, today's video is going to be on the insulation in the floor. I'm going to try to also get some framing done for my storage slash sleeping areas. Um, but today we're going to get the insulation cut. I have the panel behind me and uh, we're going to cut that and then we're going to try to get some flooring on top of that. Before I do that, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel and set the notification bell to all so when I post videos about this series and others, whether it's camping, fishing, hiking, you get notified and you can watch them and it will greatly support the channel and help me reach my personal goals, so I would appreciate that. Before I get going on the insulation, I will show you the inside of the truck as sort of just a refresher as to where we're at with the inside of the truck bed camper build. Let's check it out. So the last time I spoke to you, there was not much going on in here and there really still isn't. I had done the Reflectix insulation and my fishing rod holders and a little gear loft. And today we're going to, after I sweep this out, we're going to cut our foam insulation. And uh, what I'm going to try to do is just cut it straight so it slides in between the wheel wells. And then the uh, in front of the wheel well there and behind the wheel well here on both sides, I'm going to... Uh, tape the insulation sort of like wings because like I said before I want everything to be removable So I'm going to go ahead and slide in the main part and then the other two flaps should be able to fold down and hold it in place And keep it from sliding around then my idea is to do that same exact thing with the flooring that goes on top of it Now I want to show you what I chose for insulation and explain that a little bit So I chose these panels instead of the pink panels that you see people build People build entire campers out of those pink panels. Um, I chose this one, it was a little bit cheaper. It was $20 for this entire four by eight sheet. Uh, one of the reasons why I got it was only half an inch thick. And the R value is 3.2 and it's aluminum faced. So it has that foily uh, texture to it and it's sort of reflective. I thought that would be a little bit better suited to my build. Um, it's half the price of the pink foam. The pink foam is double the size but about double the price. And you know, it's a, a matter of $20, not a huge deal, but I just don't need the one inch thick insulation. The R value of 3.2 should be plenty for me. And as a matter of fact, I have some leftover Reflectix. I might add another barrier with that as well. And I'm probably not gonna be running any heaters or anything like that in the back of this camper. So I'm not overly concerned about it being super well insulated. I just wanna make it you know, somewhat comfortable and usable, you know, four seasons. Because of my experience camping, canoeing, backpacking, and all that stuff, really I'm just gonna rely on my sleeping system for warmth if I decide to camp in the winter time. Okay, so we took measurements of inside of the bed. I measured between the wheel wells and the length. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this piece of insulation now. It cuts really easily. You just use a basic utility knife, mark your measurements, score it, and break it, and then slide it in the bed and I'll show you that point when I get there. All right so it doesn't look like much right now basically all I've done is cut a piece of insulation and slide it in the truck. Um, I decided not to do what I'm going to call the wings here because I'm going to build L-shaped um, an L-shaped uh, bench I guess you could call it and then I'm going to connect that point to that point to be able to lay out my sleeping platform and then that sleeping platform will be removable and I'll be able to stow it in either this box or that box. So I'm going to leave the insulation the way that it is. I'm not going to insulate these corners because when I build my, my boxes for the front and the back to create the L, I'm going to insulate the back side of those. So the insulation will be on the floor and then inside the boxes. So it'll be a lot easier to insulate and probably a lot more effective. What I'm going to do is take this aluminum tape here and I am going to tape the edges on the insulation all nice nice so that they're a little bit less uh, subject to, to damage. Then I'm going to take this nice foam gasket and you can see how the you know ruffles have ridges so we've got ridges in the bed and so the tail end of this uh, pushes down a little bit. We don't really want that when we're climbing in and out of the truck. So I'm going to clean up the edges with the aluminum tape and then underneath in this low spot right here I'm gonna lay another piece of insulation this way and we're gonna place a door gasket from one corner of the bed to the other it's already pretty dry in here I don't get a lot of water in because any water that makes it in here usually follows this seam right down 
and out of the truck. It doesn't usually make it in here, um, but this will just be uh, extra insurance. Okay, so I got the foil edges on my panel here. You can see it'll give it a nice sturdy edge, or sturdier than was before. So that's like the main platform for the insulation. Um, I've swept up the bed and cleaned it out and cleaned this edge here with the acetone so that I can lay in this uh, thick piece of foam. Okay, so hopefully everybody can see that. We got a gasket placed in the bottom. And I also placed this uh, camper shell gasket on the side here. Um, I don't have high hopes for that sticking because I forgot to clean the surface, but I can always reapply. So we should be pretty well sealed up. I took great effort up front. I actually had to remove the cap and seal it correctly because the installer, the dealer did such a terrible job. Um, th there was no front rail seal in there. There was just a trim, uh, metal trim piece covering it and a little bit of foam and probably a tube and a half of black silicone all over my truck. Um, so I removed the cap, put a front rail seal in, a nice foam strip so it's nice and dry up there. Um, I've got the gasket in the bed here. Same concept as when you put a tonneau cover on. So we should be nice and tight. The only spot I can see is there's a teeny bit of daylight right here in this corner. Uh, but I, I can't really get in there to do anything about that. You can see over here they gooped it up with silicone and a brand new cap. So. Um, and I'm not going to do that. So for now, she should be pretty tight to the elements and I can go ahead and slide my floor panel in now. Alrighty, here we go. We got our nice gasket in here like I showed you. And my insulating panel is in for the floor with the aluminum taped edges. So the idea is that when I put the piece of material down, I'm going to use some plywood. I'll show you that, show you that here in a second. Um, I won't really be able to poke any holes this foam is tough um, but when you put weight on it obviously like a foot or something you you'd be worried about crushing it it's pretty solid but when I put the ply over it it will help spread it out so I don't think that I'll get a whole lot of um, denting or anything on it especially with this kind of like aluminum skin which is one of the reasons why I chose this material this is what I'm gonna be using for the floor um, I actually am really excited about this you can see the shop's kind of a disaster, but I try to keep everything. I've got all kinds of nice boards and um, ply materials. That's my sheet material area. Um, but I keep so much of what I use to, to do different things. And uh, I have this um, cabinet. It's cabinet quality. Um, I think it's eighth inch ply. Um, and it's already finished on this side, so it's going to make a really nice floor in there. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, set up the saw which I've already done and we're gonna rip this bad boy down and set the floor in Hopefully you guys can see this, but um, now I've got a partially raised and insulated floor in the truck, and it looks pretty nice. Fits nice. I'm going to go ahead and start my framing now for the two boxes up front, and hopefully it'll give you a better idea as to you know what's on my mind and how I'm planning on attacking sleeping in a five-foot box.
So here we go. I've uh, spared you the watching me drill holes and cut boards, but um, I've planed down all the edges so the lumber is pretty square and sits nice and flat. And I've got all my pocket holes and you know tight bonds, so it's a pretty square and strong setup. Uh, it worked out pretty well. So uh, it just slides in. I just take this swing arm box out. I can slide the whole thing in and out. I decided to do it in one piece instead of two because it's light enough. So uh, now I'm going to add some cleats, I think, running along this side and along that side to put in my diagonal removable pieces. This is the material that I'm going to use to top the platform inside. It's kind of dark in here. Hopefully you guys can see this. Uh, but it's three quarters of an inch thick. And it's just like that particle board stuff you see cabinets and furniture made out of. And it's got a white finished side, so it should look pretty nice. So I'm going to go ahead and trim out that platform over there. And then cut panels out of this to sit down on top of it. And I'll show you that here in a sec. So here we go, I've got the three quarter inch material creating that lip that I need so that I can go ahead and set my panels in that will, you know, be my topper. So let's get started on that. Alrighty, so we've got all of our panels cut here and framed in. So uh, what I'm going to do, I think, is remove them. I'm going to router the edges because the stuff chips pretty easily, this white finish. So we'll router the edges uh, all nice, nice, so that'll stop that from happening. And then we're going to take the whole saw and um, drill a little hole in each panel. So that way, once I finish the face of them, I can just grab the panels and pop them out. But as you can see, they just pop out and sit in these grooves here. So uh, this will be... Uh, the main platform for sitting and this is all going to get closed in and then connect diagonally like I said so I've got one two three four panels um, that I'll be able to remove while I'm on the inside to access the storage underneath and then obviously I can sit on this and you know lounge once I connect them Alrighty, so pardon the road noise here. I'm by the road at the shop and it's a real pain, trucks going by and stuff. But uh, so we've got our lids done and the tops trimmed. 
So um, now you'll get to see kind of what I'm talking about a little bit more about sleeping diagonally across this thing. So I have this piece right here. It's from an old bed frame. Uh, it's pretty solid and it already has a cleat on it. So I'm going to reuse it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this in here and get it um, cut to length and cut, you know, each end on whatever angle is necessary for it to sit, you know, nice and flush up against this. And this will be the main support that runs from one side to the other. And I have some brackets that I'll fasten to it and will sit in there. And then I'll just put cleats on this side and I'll be able to connect it with slats. And as you can see, it's starting to take shape where I'll be able to sleep um, diagonally across this, this tiny bed. And then when not in use, pick it up and stow it maybe on the side over here so that I can, uh, you know, have some space in here to sit and everything else. So let me get this cut um, on an angle and cut to size and show you the brackets that I bought to mount it. So these are the brackets I picked up on Amazon made for bed frames. Uh, my hope is to mount this on the angle and take these tabs and bend them over so that they'll you know fit into this bad boy here so it's hard to show you with one hand but i've already got a little bit of an angle here so this piece will get spiked into that and screwed in and then i'm hoping i can just bend these tabs a little bit more to accept that different angle and then i'll be able to take this piece in and out by just dropping it in here and we'll, we'll give it a shot see how it works heck yeah worked out pretty well although I had these pieces caught on an angle and I shouldn't have, I just needed to use these brackets and I bent the tabs at an angle. It's hard to do when you don't do both of them at the same time, um, but you get the idea. So I just have them, uh, the receiving end uh, with one screw in it right now. I'm going to mark their location face all of these with the probably the same material as the floor and make it look all nice nice and then remount everything and then put my cleats on and move on oh man i look like a european football player uh so i've got my finishing material here ready to finish the face of basically my cabinets um, but before i do that i want to go ahead and uh, mark the insulation for the inside of those spaces so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the panels up there, trace it from the inside, and then cut my insulation uh, and pop the finishing panels on the front so that I can just uh, pop the insulation on uh, through the inside or whichever order I do that in. I don't want to finish the face of these first because then cutting the insulation will be a matter of taking measurements versus just tracing an opening. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's check it out. So before I close the front of these bad boys off with the finishing material, I want to set my insulation up here and just trace the openings uh, from the inside. And that way the insulation that I cut to stick in the openings is a little bit larger so it fits in there, uh, fits in there snug. Alright, there we go. Front's all insulated. I'm going to go ahead and cut these panels and finish off the face of them. A little more progress, a little more progress for you. I used three quarter inch uh, cabinet grade or furniture grade uh, plywood. It has this uh, like finish on it, it's like a formica almost. Uh, it's really nice stuff. I felt like it took away from the, the finish look a little bit, but I definitely need something strong enough to hold my fat, up, my fat butt up in the ear. Um, I use nails and screws, construction screws, so, uh, and, I, and I said that's not going anywhere, so it's definitely not. Then we have this piece uh, you saw earlier, clips in the brackets. I'm going to go ahead and use some of the same three-quarter inch uh, furniture grade plywood to cut my slats that will go from that side to these cleats here. Check it out. 
pretty slick. I'll pop those three panels out and then pop this one out and they stow in there or wherever else. Um, but you know, now is the moment of truth. I only have three in here. It's ultra strong. It definitely doesn't sag, not even a little bit. So I'm not concerned with it holding me up. Only thing I am concerned about is the foam, you know, dipping down into these spaces. So um, I'm gonna lay on it and make sure I can fit across it again. And then I will tackle that problem. So let's check it out. Obviously this isn't gonna be very comfortable. So they'll tell me if I fit. Size Let's try that out. Fit a little bit better on my side. Not bad for a five foot bed, eh? <laughs> Pretty cool. I have to probably put some more in here because my body weight will smush the foam through that. We don't want that. But this dog will hunt, as they say. Laying on my back sucks because my left foot hits the side here. But, uh, you know, what do you expect? Five foot bed. I sleep on my side most of the time, anyways. But as you can see, these I don't think will move a whole lot with the foam on, on top. So I think it'll be fine. It's a living document, a work in progress. I'm not gonna jump on it, but I'm up in the air. This thing's not going anywhere. Except for that. We're gonna call that good. I added a couple pieces of poplar in there as well. And there she is. You can see from this side, plenty wide for even my chubby body. And all this stuff is removable, which is pretty sweet. So I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap that one up here. Uh, in the next video, I'll roll out the foam because I'm going to make some, some cushions out of those. And I'm not really sure how I'm going to get those situated. So I am going to call this one done here. Um, if you got any ideas out of the video, uh, please you know, consider subscribing to the channel and following along with the build. You know, and that way you get some other ideas and it'll support the channel and I would greatly appreciate it. So uh, any comments or sorry, any questions, drop them in the comments below. Be sure to like the video. And I think I already said this, but subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.